to the final third. All right. Um, we're here with my boy, Michael Seaton Jr. Yeah. You know, um, before we get started, again, let me uh, reiterate what the show's about. Soccer. Everything soccer. Everything soccer. Coaching, playing, uh, 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 nursing, uh, entrepreneur, business, whatever you want to talk about soccer, we're here. Um, luckily enough, again, I got another hometown boy uh, on the show, uh, Michael Seaton. So go ahead. Tell us a little bit about you, man. Uh, like you said, Michael Seaton Jr. Yep. I'm a native here in uh, Maryland. I live in Capitol Heights, Maryland, mm-hmm. and um, originally born in Jamaica, Spanish Town, Jamaica, and yeah, of course, Spanish Town, Jamaica. Spanish, That's what it's called? Yeah. Is there a re- is there a bunch of Spanish people there? No, I think something happened. Yeah. You know, back then. Yeah. In history, but I don't really know much about <laughs> it. But I think it has something to do with Spanish. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Spanish people took over that part. I think. It, 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 I Christopher think so. Columbus discovered Jamaica, didn't he? Oh, you, you asking the wrong person right tripping? now, and Brandon? You know, somebody, somebody, Google that. <laughs> I, <laughs> he said you're asking the wrong I don't person. <laughs> I don't know. I failed social studies, boy. <laughs> I failed social studies. Yeah, I think that's 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 history though, not social studies. But is it? Is it? It's history. It's social studies. It's history. Oh God, uh, you, you messing up, man! I'm not. I don't, I don't know either, bro. It's either, bro. Mm-hmm. But yeah, okay. So uh, Spanish Town, Jamaica. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? So when? When did you come to the United States? Came when I was seven. Seven. Uh, my mom left probably when I was like three mm-hmm. to come here and mm-hmm. just like get stuff organized mm-hmm. so I can come over here and life will be it. easier for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's. I came here when I was ninety eight. I was eight. Okay. Okay. So I know the same feeling, man. And you're you got siblings? Yeah, I have um. So I have three brothers mm-hmm. and two sisters. Mm-hmm. So I have one that live in Belgium. Oh, snap. One that live in Connecticut. My brother's from New York. Okay. Two of my brothers from New York, exactly. Yeah. And one of them is like Puerto Rican. You yeah. know what I'm saying? All over the map. Yeah. The season. So what are you, the youngest or in the middle? No, nah, I'm the second oldest. Second oldest. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yo, that's dope, man. That's that's dope. Shout out shout out to Ma. Got everybody international. Yeah. It's lit. Is lit. Speaking of international, actually, we'll get to that later. So, you say you grew up in Cap- Capitol Heights? Yeah. How was that growing up there? Uh, it was fine. I went to Central High School, but I bounced around, though. Mm-hmm. I went to Central High. I went to Northwestern High School, mm-hmm. and I went to Parkdale. Parkdale. Yes. Northwestern and Parkdale, I'm very familiar with. I, I, I don't know about Central much. Yeah. Um, but so, growing up before high school, did you play club? Yeah, I played club for Free State. Free State. So I played for Free State. And that was because I think I went through a lot of academies. Like, not a lot of academies, but a lot of yeah. programs. Meaning, like, yeah. um, what is that What a program called? ODP? ODP, Olympic Development. Yeah. yeah. At ODP, uh-huh. played State. I was on the um, the B team for ODP mm-hmm. and bounced around and played on, ended up playing on the A team. So it's like, I always was the outcast yeah. coming in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's because, I, I'm not going to say because, they don't know me. Of you course. know they're going with who they know and who they've seen already so right. i have to prove myself yeah but i didn't have money my mom didn't have money exactly so for me to get into these well-known programs mm-hmm. you kind of needed money you and what happened what happened for me was i performed to a point where i opened eyes so people offered to pay for me right you know what i mean because right. i had parents like trying to pay for me to yeah. play for the team yeah. so like so for now that would have been like damn they're really doing that you right. know what i mean back then it was like Oh, okay. Okay, I get to play. Like, right, that's, right, right, that's fine. right, right. So my mom was like, "Oh my god, thank you," you know. Mm-hmm. But like, I was like, "All right, cool. I'm gonna get to play. Yeah, no problem. Let's do it." Yeah, yeah. Nah, I was the same way. I was the only. I played Damascus uh, Region One, mm-hmm. and my parents couldn't afford it either. So some rich parents somewhere it's just like I'll pay for you man. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's lit all right bet yeah, you know yeah. what I mean but yeah man and but the thing that sucked for me about stuff like that is when that happens on those teams. I don't know whether it was just a dynamic of that team I was on, but then it felt like I had to carry the team. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Like I had to be the guy that did everything. What age was that though? When you thought that? This this was when I, I was starting, I was coming into, I was becoming a teenager. I was 13, yeah. 14. I was starting to realize Okay, that, okay. You know what I mean? Like me playing on the team just didn't mean like I get to do the same things they do. I had to do everything. You yeah. know what I mean? I had to be that guy. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Was it like that on, on Freestyle and an ODP? Um, it, yeah, it probably was, but I never thought about it like you that. You know what I mean? I just, I just, for me, it was just playing. Mm-hmm. And back then, I didn't have like the step overs and the chops and all mm-hmm. that. I was just like a push and run dude. Yeah. Work hard. You know what okay. I mean? I can't pull no muscle. Natural at, at that age. Ability. Just natural. Yeah, 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 exactly. So 
push it, kick the ball over the top. Mm -hmm. I'm there. Run out to it. Through ball, I'm there. You know what I mean? So I was just a goal scorer yeah. throughout when I was younger. So, yeah. I mean, of course, I have to, my job is to win the game for the team. Yeah. I, I knew that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when I didn't, I was upset, but I wasn't beating myself about, right. up about it, you know? Yeah, of I, course, me neither. Mm -hmm. At the point, I wasn't. It wasn't until later on that I started to realize everybody else were like, it'll be times where it'll be something simple, like at, at practices, like like we're doing sprints. Everybody's Ooh. just half-assing it, but it's Phil. I'm running it. I'm running it. I'm running it. Now we get in games. It's like 80th minute. Everybody's like, coach, like we can't, like coach is asking us to do all this. Like we can't do anymore. But then they're looking at Phil like, all right, Phil, come on. You got to be able yeah. to pull, pull through for us. Phil, go from holding mid and go play striker. Phil, go from striker, go play right wing. Phil, I never really had a position because yeah. it was just fill in wherever everybody else was struggling at. Oh, we're, we're weak on the, on the left back. Phil, fill in the left back. Mark this fast guy. Yeah. Oh, we need to score goals. You know what I mean? Yeah. As a player, I was just like, oh, the coach likes me. That means I'm versatile. That means I'm doing all this. Yeah. Later on, I realized it's because like I'm the only guy on the team that could do that. It's not a yeah. bad thing. It's not. And that know? put that put a good weight on your shoulder. Yeah. I mean, it's weight, but it's yeah. good weight. You know what I mean? If you, exactly. can, if you can live up to that weight, mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. surpass anything. And yeah. I think, I think that's, that's the main thing for me. It's like I had that weight throughout my life. Mm. You know what I mean? So mm. for me, going through the stuff I'm going through now, yeah. that's light stuff. It's nothing. Because this is my best season. Yeah. And I've started since I was 16. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've cried from 16 to 18. Yeah. Because I've been cut from team to team to team to team. Yeah. But it's not because of how I played. Right. It's not nothing. It's not, they say it was my attitude. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it's not my attitude. You got to understand, like, they don't understand where we come from. Exactly. And I think that's the biggest thing for me mm -hmm. was that I come from poverty. I'm still in poverty. I'm just in comfortable poverty I'll yeah. call it comfortable poverty you know what I mean True. I don't really like. <laughs> that's a good way to put it it's man. comfortable poverty like I can I can do my thing but I'm comfortable with it I don't mm -hmm. have to look over my shoulder and know a guy come around with a gun about to shoot me like you know yeah. what I mean like yeah. I don't have to live like that yeah. no more so it's kind of like I brought that to the soccer field so when someone tried to take it from me you know what I mean you see that kid that was in the poverty come out again like yeah, I'm yeah, very yeah. angry you I'm gotta, like damn I want it like, yeah. I need it you know what I mean yeah. I don't want it I need, need it, it. So it's kind of like the guys that you're giving my job, sometimes they just want it. Mm -hmm. I need to do this. If I don't do it, I'm cut off. Like I'm, my life is cut off. That's crazy. I don't have bro. nothing else after that. Yeah. But it's kind of, I don't like really tell people that. Of course. I want them to feel that energy from me. Mm -hmm. So, cause I know once you feel that energy mm -hmm. without me telling you that, mm -hmm. you really respect me. But mm -hmm. if I tell you something and you do it, mm -hmm. I don't feel like you felt that in your heart. Right. You know what I mean? That's so, true. So that's how I look at certain that's things. That's true. You yeah. know what's funny? Let me name a national team. Yeah. Brazil. They won the most World Cups. Now, if you go and look at the Brazil soccer philosophy, it's been find the kids in the slums, develop them, sell them for big money. Rents, repeat, recycle. Rents, repeat, recycle. One thing that you know from the Brazilians is that style, that flair, that passion, that drive comes from the kids who don't want it, but they need it. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And like, now come to the United States, which we'll hit on this, you know, more. The better clubs that are going on Disney Cups, all these cups, even ODP yeah. teams and stuff, it's full of teams that don't necessarily, yeah, they want it, but they don't necessarily need it. Because in order for you to get to those levels, what do you need? You need the money. You need money for that. You need the money. So the only people that can play at those levels are the people with the money. Yeah. Now, do they need to be playing at that level to put food on the table for their family? Do they need to be playing at that level to ensure their family that mom will have a bright future and it won't be yeah. me ending up in the streets? Yeah. Nah, because if they fail, screw it. I'm going to go to school. My parents will pay for me to go to college. I'm going to go learn some other trait that my parents can help me out with. Yeah. But you, it's like, it's either this, maybe that, maybe, or you end up on the streets or maybe you end up just doing some bullshit nine to five that doesn't serve anything, no growth, no nothing. So you need it. Yeah. Now, there's a reason why the United States is yet to win the World Cup. There's a reason why the United States just this past World Cup didn't even qualify in a region where it's like you're playing against third world countries. If this was FIFA, we're talking like three and a half star teams. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I just want to make that that point out there, but keep going. So you're, you're, you need it. Yeah. And so people are seeing that or people aren't seeing that, but then when it's taken from you, 
you come out like dog like i'm gonna fight for what i'm gonna fight for i need it. I, this is my survive like i'm surviving mode exactly right? and they take it they tend to take it the wrong way yeah and 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 i've i've seen it i think i've gotten better over the years at reading people mm-hmm. you know i've gotten very i told you that the other day mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. i mm-hmm. i got better at reading people and like off just the first interaction yeah you know and like even with coaches sometimes with me like like i said this is my first my best season so far and i signed since i was 16 so what's that six years yeah you know what i mean six, yep. six years in it and this is my best season why is that this is the first time i've ever played consistently and even this year when i started off i was coming off the bench for eight games right and it's and it, it, i got a couple knocks then and there yeah. but there's times when i came back from the knocks and i was still on the bench yeah you know what i mean yeah because they had me at a quote-unquote super sub mm-hmm. cool you know what I mean? I'm like, all right. Came off the bench, scored like two goals out of the eight games. But then now that drive hits me now, I'm like, I should be a starter. Right. I cannot be here and not start. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I have people depending on me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I cannot be here and not start on this team. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I took it. I took the bull by the horns, how they say it. Yeah. You know, when they gave me the opportunity to start, I showed them that you, I need to be on the pitch. And it was so crazy. Five months into the season, I only had three goals. And then it hit the last five months. I have 15. Wait. <laughs> I have 15. Hold on, hold on. Wait. Recycle those uh those those facts again. Five months. Five months of the season. Yeah. Three goals. Yeah. How many games is that? That's like probably what, 15 for me? 15. Yeah. So you're averaging like less than 0.5. Way less than 0.5 goals. Yeah. Wait, I think you're like at 0.5 goals 0. a game. Had to be. And that's me coming off the bench. Coming off the bench. Because I came off the bench eight games. And the games that I did play mm. in those five months, I didn't play 90, 90, 90, 90 throughout. You yeah. know what I mean? There's probably two or three games where I did play 90 or 80 mm. and I got an assist. I mm. changed the game. Mm. But there's games when I played mm. that I'm impacting the game just off my presence. Mm. You know? And mm. that's one of the things why my club right now We've had discussions. So when I was, I went into meetings about contracts, mm-hmm. you know, when I only had five goals, you know? So think about that. That was a striker. They expect you, to, before they even talk contract extension, you, they expect you to have 20 goals yeah, by then. Yeah, at least 20 goals you know, season, yeah. My club saw that even when this kid is not scoring, not assisting, he is still impacting the team because yeah. the team plays well when he's in, in the, the mix. Yep. And that was my first time feeling like someone believed in me. You know I what I mean? You. So mm-hmm. what that did was that pushed me. Mm-hmm. Because if you really look at my stats or anyone look at my stats, when I do play, I do score. Yeah, of course, man. I do score. Yep. And there have been years and years where I'm barely playing mm-hmm. and I'm, my stats is saying 15 goals, one, you know, 15 games, one goal. One goal, yeah. But you don't look at the minutes that I've played. Mm-hmm. And this season, I've played literally a thousand plus minutes mm-hmm. and I have 18 goals. Yeah. Because that was... That's one thing which I never understood about, um, like, American soccer as far as, like, even professional recruiting and collegiate recruiting where the first thing they're like, so show me the stats. Yeah. You go overseas, they're like, let me come see this kid play. And then they'll be like, let's see what his numbers look like. Yeah. And then they'll be like, send him here to come and play. Yeah. Here, the first thing they'll be like, college, even at college level, they'll be like, let me see, what are the stats saying? If you're not top this and that in scoring, they don't even look at you. Yeah. If you're a defender, you don't have this many shutouts and blah, 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 they don't even look at you. What sense does that make, dog? Let's say you're a holding midfielder. How is your worth monitored or, or, or how is your worth rated based on paper statistics? Yeah. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add up. And I, I get it, too, based on your position. You yeah. know what I mean? Cool. A striker is supposed to score. Right. A defender is supposed to have a clean sheet. Right. A goalkeeper is supposed to have a clean sheet. Right. And a midfield, depending on what type of midfield, how you play and what the team really needs, mm-hmm. you're supposed to break up play, mm-hmm. probably get an assist, and that's the number 10. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They score and stuff. Mm-hmm. I, get, I guess you can be elite, but the problem with that is I have also look at the guy impacting the game. Right. Off the stat sheet Right Look at him over there Taking those three guys Out to play Bro For that one guy To be open For Bro. that goal You know what I call this Yo mm. And I keep telling people this And people like Keep looking at me like What the fuck are you talking about Dog Benzema to me Is top five strikers in the world yeah. Easily 
But if you look at the stat sheets, he doesn't score. He doesn't score the way they want. He doesn't have 25 goal seasons. None of that. But if you see what he does on the field, bro, he is top five strikers in the world. Yeah. Just like you're saying, he would drop into the middle, get the ball, draw two center backs, lay it off for somebody else, spin off, get the ball back, set it up for Cristiano goal. Nobody yeah. sees that work that he did. They in see that. the goal. They see the goal. That, that they see the goal. The goal. And and that's normal. That's the that's the world that we live in. Yeah. In all aspects, like in the football world, like I get it. You know what I mean. But like, there's been times where I'm over on trial, mm -hmm. and like I went through it. I think two years ago or a year ago, mm -hmm. I went through it where I'm bouncing from trial to trial to trial to trial. Mm -hmm. So it was so funny to me. I even had opportunities where they're like, "Yo, you have to score to get this contract. Yeah. If you don't score, you're not gonna get the contract." And I score. But you don't understand the feeling that like hitting me while I'm in the hotel room. Like I'm like, damn, I need this, bro. If mm -hmm. I don't score this, bro, like my family can't eat in the, in the long run. You know what I mean? That's so I crazy, need to bro. score. Like that's pressure, bro. For me, I call some sometimes modern day slavery. Like some the way I live sometimes is like modern day slavery. Mm -hmm. Like I need to do this before they can let me off the chain, bro. That's like true. if I don't do this, bro, I'm gonna be stuck in the chain still, bro. I'm gonna be stuck on that chain that would not let me go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, they said score a goal. I scored the goal. No contract You know what I mean Interesting No contract and, 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 and I would always carry that moment with me Throughout my success Yeah Like it was just so funny to me So anytime I hear a kid Saying he did this Or he went through that He went through that mm -hmm. I like breaking down my scenario to him mm -hmm. Cause I'm gonna show him that What you're doing Not worse than what I'm going through It's still bad right. But trust me If I can surpass that little thing And that's not even little for me That was big Right You can too You, do the same, yep. you know what I mean yep. And there's so many times Bro I got into so many fights on trials bro Just just arguments with other players Because I don't have a contract So it's kind of like I'm I'm getting shipped out there On my own dime Right Done with no contract mm. I know I'm a good player There's so many players out there That I know that I surpass In my youth right. That are above me Right you know what I mean? But they're there. It's their time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I understand everybody have their moments and their time. Mm -hmm. When it's my time, I'm going to take it. I always have done that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Once you give me the right opportunity to play. But at the end of the day, it's like, dude, my time will come. And that's how I look at stuff like that. That's true. Yeah. Yo, that that small thing, that, that little that thing, faith, where you just got to be like, man, no matter what, dog, I know my time will come. Yeah. And I know the cream will always rise to the top. No matter how many coaches tell me, nah, you're not good enough. No matter how many players look at you and be like, this guy, like, where's he from? Where have you played? Da, 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 da. The cream always rises to the top. Let me take you back to when uh, Seattle. Yeah. You guys just won the MLS Cup. And you were signed onto that Ross, Ross, roster, right? Portland. Portland, sorry. Yeah. That's Seattle. Portland. Mm -hmm. Portland Timbers. Won the MLS Cup. You were on their roster. And this was like, everybody was like, yo, that's freaking amazing. That's yeah. dope. That's dope. Next year, you're off to a new team. How was that feeling? It was a, it was a, um, it just the way it went down. Yeah. It was so like, I cried. At, I cried. Yeah. Oh, that, I was um, 18 and a half. Or 19 Still a kid though You know I'm still a kid I cried Like literally in my car In the parking lot Yeah Crying Like you know what I mean And people don't really see that You know what I mean That's true Cause I'm, I'm not gonna allow people to of see course, it Of course I can of say course. it You know what I mean mm -hmm. But you know People only believe what they can see yeah. But at the end of the day I'm saying like I cry when I was in the car I call my mom She's like This is what my mom said to me And this, this quote will always carry me mm -hmm. I had an exit meeting Bro And um I was in the locker room Cleaning up myself With a trash bag Taking all my stuff out the locker and everything, uh -huh. and my mom was like, "Going there is my strong black son, with your with your your head held high." Mm -hmm. She said that, started crying in the locker room. Nobody could see me crying though, cause I put my hoodie on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, "All right, cool." When she said that shit, that carried with me throughout my entire career. Like yeah. that would never change. Mm -hmm. And the feeling after winning the the cup, even winning the cup, mm -hmm. I didn't celebrate. The way everybody was celebrating mm. Why wow, that's the determination That's the hunger for me I came halfway in the season Not expecting to play But to show them that I am ready to play next season Right Because you already have your core group I'm, I'm be realistic Seems already set yeah. Already set I'm not gonna I'm not gonna come in there And expect to play mm. No I have to prove myself mm. I did that I know I did that mm -hmm. I've scored a tremendous goal in training mm. I'm only 19 mm. I'm, I'm physical like the freaking 20, 23 year old, 25 year old. So they can't they can't tackle me like they, they think they could have. And I'm only 19. Yeah. So it's kind of like those little things, they didn't embrace that for me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I didn't mm -hmm. feel like they embraced it because mm -hmm. next season, I got cut. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it wasn't because 
they um, wanted to cut me. It mm-hmm. was like, I think that competitiveness came out of me again where mm-hmm. they see me like walking cocky mm-hmm. and I'm doing stuff on the field like, yeah, like let's go. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I'm not like being quiet and just doing my job. Like right. I'm literally like playing mm-hmm. and just like walking very cocky. And I guess the guy didn't like, coach didn't like that at the time. I understand that. You know what I mean? It's fine. But um, I didn't, when we won the championship, I didn't celebrate because I know that I wasn't a part of it. Yeah, I was there, but I wasn't really there yet. Yeah, I wanted yeah, to right. stamp my class yeah. of winning that cup. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I didn't want to show them like I'm complacent because I'm there. Like, no, I want to play. You know what I mean? To help Fair y'all enough. win that next, the next one. Yeah. And um, it hurt though when they cut me, but at the end of the day, I told myself I had to move on. Mm-hmm. I didn't have no problem with it because, like I said, that's going to be another situation where I can write in my book when I when my career is over and be like, okay, boom, I surpassed that. But yep, look where I'm at now. That. You know? Yeah, it's crazy. Um. Pebo, uh, I don't know if you know Pebo. Nah. Uh, he's he's another guy that grew up in the area at Clarks Clarksburg. Uh, he he even got a stint. He had a stint for New York City FC. Mm. Played play with Pirlo and all of them when uh, Vieira was was the coach of yeah. New York City. Um, but I don't I don't I don't understand what's up with again the American soccer culture and these one year contracts yeah. that they give to literally everybody but like maybe two guys on the team. What assurance do you get? So for me, I can say this, even in like a nine to five world, just you're not even a soccer player, you're in a regular world. You work at your best when you feel that your job, your whatever is secure, committed secure. to you. It's secure. There's job security there. Yeah. You know that there's that commitment there and you're going to work for the next two, three years, whatever. You know that. Yeah. But you come in a place, they're like, yeah, we'll sign you for a season. Yeah. So you're always like, yeah. I could be out. Even if they say we sign you for a season and there's potential for a bonus for another season if you score this many amount of goals, you still know deep down in your head, like from your experience, even if I score 100 goals, there's no guarantee I'm going to be here next season. Yeah. You know what I mean? The only thing that guarantees is a contract that says three to five seasons or yeah. whatever, three years, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of course, there's no like reassurance to it, but I think it depends on the person. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that player. Yeah. How do you go about it? Because you can give me, for instance, I had a one-year deal mm-hmm. this, this year. Mm-hmm. And um, after I got that, I wasn't like, oh, my God, oh, my God. I was just telling myself, like, listen, I got one year deal. I know what, if I don't make it, what I have to go back to. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, like, I'm not going back to that. Mm-hmm. Like, like y- you're going to have to compete against me. You're going to have to fight me off the ball. I'm not going to lose what I know that I have to earn this season mm-hmm. for me to go back to the trenches. That's not happening. Right. And I think depends on the person if you can take that because basically by them giving you a one year contract that's supposed to light fire onto you yeah to gain that respect to for them to give you a better deal okay you know what I mean so it, sometimes it won't work mm-hmm. sometimes it will work so you think a lot it's, it serves as a motivation factor it should a lot, it's, it's, it should or you be. should look at it that way rather than like Damn, you don't think I'm worth two years? It should be. It should I mean, be and then, and, and, and then this will be a different situation after you've already felt like you've earned it and mm-hmm. show that you earned it and mm-hmm. they still don't want to give you what you deserve. Gotcha. Then you can argue with that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But for the first year, you just have to say, all right, cool. Mm-hmm. Let me shut my mouth. Time to work. Mm-hmm. Give me an opportunity to play. I'll show you that I'm worth more than such and such. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's how they should look at it. That's true. Man. So tell me a little bit about so you've had you've experienced the culture here. You're already bouncing from team to team as as a professional. Um, then you get a stint. You go over overseas to uh, to Turkey, right? Nah, Israel. It's Israel. Why am I getting my countries mixed up? <laughs> to Israel. Um, yeah, you're not far off though. Yeah, Tur- Turkey, Turkey, Turkey over there Turkey by Israel. Because I love Turkish football. Yeah, I love the those Galatasaray friend about all those filthy, filthy. So you're in Israel. How was that like playing overseas? First of all, how was that just living in Israel, yeah. dog? It was it was interesting though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um I didn't know much about it. I know about Jews. Like I've seen them. Yeah. I've seen I've seen <laughs> Amish people before. Like I've seen it. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? And so so it was it it was it, it was it was it was funny though, cause like when I went there, I didn't really look at it like all right, cool, whatever. Yeah. Like, all right, cool. Like I got released from Portland. Yeah. I gotta go there, get some goals, get some games, then I'm back to where I wanna be at. Right. So I went there, played and literally lit it up. And some weird stuff happened where it's just so many people gunning for me, like agents gunning for me over there, yeah. the top agents. Yeah. And remember, I'm 20. Mm-hmm. I'm still young. Young, yeah. I'm young. still young, bro. So in my head, I'm like, I'm not used to that guy wanted me, mm-hmm. that guy wanted me, and this guy not trying to let me go to these guys. You know what uh, I mean? So it was one of those things where when it comes out to agents. Yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah, 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 yeah. So it was kind of like, 
that's new to me. Yeah. Even though I'm five years in at that point You're as a demand, professional, yeah. this is my first time actually playing consistently. Mm-hmm. So for me to get that buzz mm-hmm. was kind of weird and shocking to me. So my decision making, it was like pumping in my head. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. And um, push comes to shove, I stayed with the guy that I was with. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he didn't get me the deal that he promised. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and the other agents could have got me that because I realized that the agent plays a big part in your career as right. well. You know what I mean? And right. I didn't know that until I had to go through the fire to mm-hmm. really learn that the agent plays a big role in your decision making and what you where Massive. you end up. Massive, Massive to be to be exact, you know. Yeah. And that was another roadblock. So I'm that's the point of my career. I'm hitting different scenarios, but mm-hmm. all those scenarios are roadblocks. Yep. But I think it's building me for the future, which is now mm-hmm. where my decision making is sharp. Like I don't make silly mistakes when it comes down to my decisions. Yeah, you know I always involve my mother. I always involve my family. But at the end of the day, I tell myself it's my decision, and I go off of my past roadblocks. Yeah, you know because I won't repeat that again. Yeah, hey, it, it fooled me once, but not just that. I think the best learners learn from their mistakes, yeah. right? Um, I also I always I always wonder because Levy came on the show too and was telling me, man, like yo. Agents really important. Before you pick an agent, make sure you look at their history. Make sure you look at all that stuff. For and, and you were young too. Like you make sure your parents are looking. At that point, similar to me, I had terrible experience with my agent when I went over to Germany, and I was I was uh, I was seventeen at the time. You know, went over there. My contract was seventy thirty. Agent taking seventy. I'm taking thirty. Yeah. Where in the hell is that? <laughs> Like what? Yeah. But I'm a young kid. I'm just like, I'm just trying to play ball. I'm not even reading contracts. I'm just like, yeah, okay, dotted line is lit. Look, give me my jersey. Give me my. Let's take the picture. You know what I yeah. mean? Not much care or thought into that. That decision single handedly, as I was staying over there, you know, after my year contract was over and it's done. Look at my account. There's nothing there. There's no other team really coming after me. So now I'm just a kid in Germany. You know what I'm saying? And when, when your contract's done, they were giving us somewhere to stay. When your contract's done, of course, you're out of there. Yeah. So now I'm a kid in Germany with no home, no house, um, barely any money because man, uh, agent took 70% of my, my bread. Now I'm hitting him up like, yo, man, I need more money. I need all this. Like, I don't know what, I don't know what to tell you. Like, yeah. you're going to have to figure it out, figure it out. You know what I mean? So I'm sitting there in Germany like, damn, I can't even go back home. Like my parents think I'm over here playing professionally. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's thinking I'm doing all these other things. Like it was quite embarrassing actually. You know what I mean? And whole time I come to find out that my agent already had a back deal with them just to bring in any player that could at least come in and, and do something. Yeah. And then by the end of it, they, they promised him that they would give him two or three of their players that he can, you know, manage. So at the end of the day, he didn't really care what happened to me. You know what I mean? At first it was like, yeah, I care about you. I, I got this idea for, I got this plan for you. Yeah. Sign here at 70, 30 now, but this guy is telling me he wants you. Da, da, you just need to appear at this jump, play for this many minutes, show up on this team yeah. sheet. You're good. So I'm like, I trust, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. End of the day, I'm packing my bags and I'm coming back home to the United yeah. States empty handed, yeah. man. So agents play a massive role. Anybody listening, you think about going play pro, whatever, the first thing, as soon as you get the attention and stuff, first thing, find a good agent. Yeah. Uh, somebody that, like you're saying, and it's something which you're gonna have to build a skill for. Yeah. Understanding people, judging people, judging character, you know what I mean? Yeah, and that, 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 you don't get that overnight. Yeah. You know, you're not, you're gonna have to go through it. And if you don't, and you you surpass a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. kudos, like, good. Like, you're, you're one of those guys that got that easy road, mm-hmm. which is not bad, and sometimes it's not good, because I think if you break out easy, you tend to hit a point where when the hard stuff hits you, it's tough. You don't know how to you cope with t- it. Yeah, like you, you, you give up. Like you're, yeah. you're done. Sometimes you know what I mean? being blessed is less, right? Somebody it, said that. Quote. It, exactly. So for me, <laughs> Brandon said it. Right? Brandon said Brandon that. Said quote. I know. I, know, in the air, like, I know. I heard it from somebody. <laughs> shout out B. Yeah, shout out B. I heard. He it. I know. I heard it from somebody. <laughs> but yeah, man. Go ahead though. Nah, bro. But exactly. Being uh, what, what? What's that? Blesses less. Blesses bless less. Blesses yeah. less, bro. And the thing is, like, for guys like me, like that's going through it. Like, once I make it and get there, I know how to hold that. Mm. Like, you can't take that away from me. Mm. Cause any way you try to, any direction you try to bring that from, to bring that to me, mm. I'm gonna know what mm. to do. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to be able to get around me. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's off me going through my trials and tribulations. Like, that's light stuff to me now. That's that's it, man. Yeah. That's, it. That's, that's the whole thing about life. The essence of life is just going through your trials. You're always going to get the roadblocks. You got to go over. If you can't go over, you got to go underneath. If you can't go underneath, go to the right, go to the left. But what you cannot do is stand there and be yeah. like, damn. Oh, well, I guess me, I'm going to set up shop me, here. Me, I'm going to run through it. <laughs> run whatever I'm you got to do, right? Whatever you got to do. Yeah. So that's, that's the mindset which I think gets you to where you need to be and with that being said um i just i just want for kids that are aspiring to go pro everybody that wants to get to where you're at because we've all been there you know what are the little things that you say you have to do even the big things whatever what do you have to do absolutely a must that you must do to at least give yourself an opportunity to maybe um get a chance to go play pro the the little thing for a little thing first Mm. is definitely be humble and that might be a big thing too. Humility. That might be a big thing, humility, because you're you're gonna get that, mm-hmm. you know. And I think um, you have to find some someone or something that gets you going. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's number two for me. You have to find something that gets you motivated. Because mm-hmm. if you don't find what gets you motivated, once you hit rock bottom and you're in that foreign country or wherever by yourself, yeah. out of your comfort zone, yeah. You, who you gonna who you gonna look who you gonna look look yeah. for? Like you the scariest moments. You gonna life. have to look for somebody yeah. and and me. That's my mother Family like, yep. That's my mother I call my mom If not my mom I call my uncle mm-hmm. You know what I mean So oh, especially if you have That one option Make sure you have a second one mm-hmm. Make sure you have a third one mm-hmm. That has your best interest Because at the end of the day You're going to hit that point Where you buy yourself And you need them the most Yeah You know And yeah. that's that's for me And um, what was the other one What was the question So the other question is So as kids that want to become pro Like mm-hmm. what do you think Essentially other than you know Making sure you're humble, which yeah. is what you say. Making sure you have somebody like a support system. Exactly. Um, what kind of mindset do you think you need to be in? Um, I know for sure it's like you have to grind. For me, you have to grind. Yeah. And especially one of the things that sucks about it is like you were saying, and I never really harped on it, was when you go to tryouts, when you go to everything, you're – I was never the guy that was like, oh, yeah, this kid's going to be great. Da, 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 yeah. da. You know, I always have to prove myself first always. and then get it. You know what I mean? And also just, one, having the color of my skin, you're expected to come in and play a certain style of play or not. You know what I mean? But then you have to go in there and tell them, no, I actually know yeah. how to play like this, like that. I don't rely on my speed and my strength. Yeah. So there's there's lots of stuff that, as a young kid, you have to get your mind wrapped around. So what are those those little things that you think? And, and that's one thing, too, you're talking about we're going on trial. What mm-hmm. they need to understand is when you go, if you're an American or you're Jamaican, African, wherever you are, mm-hmm. like once you're, if you're Jamaican and African in America, you just say that, you mm-hmm. know? If you go to another country, you're on trial, you are at risk more than anybody else that is there. You know what's funny? Ty was saying that when yeah. he went to Brazil. He went to Brazil. And Where's he from? Uh, he's from here, Baltimore. Oh, yeah, he's at risk. And then they were like Tyrone Hall, just by, by looking at his name. Look at, yeah. his, look at the name. Nah, nah, nah. He, he was talking about in Brazil, yeah. You better hope his name was Hallino. Hallino, right? Hallino. That's the only... If I'm telling you, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's... They diff- said they automatically rid him out. USA? Heck it, no. It, it, it depends on where you go. And that's where you need a good agent mm-hmm. that has your best interest. Because for one, if, if, if for instance, my agent, if you say you're going to send me to quote unquote wherever, he's going to be like, no, mm-hmm. he's not going there. Because I know the history that they have with his skin color. You know what I mean? How he acts. I know Michael act. He's very passionate. I can't send him there because they don't like kids like that mm-hmm. or guys like that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He's already looking into scenarios that he know might build if he sends me there. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing you have to look at. Anytime you're about to make a move, look at your scenario and what you're about to go in because you don't just want to go into a fire or go into a field. You can get shot up. Yeah. You can't do that. You know what I mean? And and that's one of the biggest things. Like, and you definitely have to work hard because the hardest thing is for you when you hit that bumpy road and they set you back to go home and give up. Mm. Cause it's easy. It's easy to work when the gym's in front of you. Yeah. That is light stuff. Like I know for a fact if I had a gym in my house, I would go there every day. Mm. Like literally, like go downstairs, I'm at the gym. You know what I mean? Mm. But when you don't have that gym now, all you have is what? Your backyard. Or the park around the corner mm-hmm. and a little um a swing set or something that you have to stretch on and pull, pull up pull up yeah, yeah, yeah. you ain't gonna wanna do it. You know what that's I mean? True. And and that's how you can like weed out the ones that really want it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you have to work hard, especially in hard situations. Not when you get the easy stuff where the gym's right there, the jacuzzi mm-hmm. right there, you know, everything. Cause me for a jacuzzi I used to have when I'm at my club, I'm all season now. I fill up the bathtub. Yeah. 
That's a hot tub. That's my hot tub right there. Yeah. And I put Epsom salt in it. Yeah. That's my hot tub. That's so right. I improvise. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's one of the things. Because it's so easy for somebody to have it at their exposal or disposal and use it. Yeah. But when, when you don't have there. it, what you about to do? What you about to do with it? You know that's what I mean? That's true, man. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Man, so, hey, I think, I think everything that you're telling everybody is stuff that... Um, a lot of people don't know. A lot of people just think, you know, to go pro, I probably just need to have a lot of luck. Me yeah. growing up, that was part of the thing, too. My mindset was, no, oh, I can play pro. It's just, is you know, this big time agent going to yeah. just stumble into a game and see yeah. me at the right time where you think it's a lot of luck. But the older and older I start to get, I realize it's not just luck. Like, one, you create your own luck. Yeah. Two, if you're doing all the right things and you're working hard enough and you're trying all these things and you're going out to teams and you're, if you're not getting cut, you're not working hard enough. Yeah. You're not trying out hard enough. You're going out to teams, you're trying, you're trying to make a name for yourself. It'll automatically come. One yeah. day or another, it'll come. One day or another. You know what I it mean? It could be later when you, when you freaking night 20 yeah. and it don't work out for you the next five years right. and you keep at it. You might break out when you're 28. Mm-hmm. You don't know. That's you know true. what I mean? That's what people don't fail to understand. And I always say, find, remember I say, find somebody that keeps you motivated. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if I don't have my mom now, and I say I don't score a goal, and this is what I did last season. I didn't score for the first, what, six, seven games. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't competing with guys in the league. I competed myself with Benzema and Morata. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I looked yeah, at their yeah, stats. Yeah. I'm like, Morata plays eight games, one goal. I play eight games, two goals. Okay, there you go. And look, look at level he's at. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm not competing with the guy in my league that has six, seven goals because I, I know I want to be over there when mm-hmm. that guy's at. That guy's going through it, mm-hmm. and he's at a big club, and you expect him to score, mm-hmm. but he's not. So how is he going to turn around and get, get that, that 15, 20 goals? Facts. You know what I mean? Facts. And look, I ended up watching them last season. And them boys hit 12, 13 goals like that. Mm. And the thing about it is once you have a coach and a team behind you, a staff behind you that believes in you, Mm -hmm. bro, you can go 10 games and score zero goals. Mm -hmm. And you can then you can go a month and score nine goals. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, like, they don't matter. Those goals that you don't score for the first 10 games, Mm -hmm. at the end of the season, Mm -hmm. when your stats say 20, 30 games, 15 goals, Mm -hmm. they forgot about them them 10 games you you didn't score the goal in. They don't don't remember that. You know what I mean? And that's what I realized. It's like CR7 last year. Exactly, bro. Especially this year too. When this he, when he oh first, yeah, yeah, he was doing year. terrible at Juve. First four games yeah. didn't score, and now the niggas got he's and got. They, and they forgot <laughs> about those games yeah. that he didn't score in. You know what I mean? Of course we remember it, but we don't care about it. Nobody cares. That's how I look at it. It's like That's you can't true. beat yourself up about the moment, mm-hmm. that little moment where you're not doing thing and people booing you because you mm-hmm. see when the end result matters. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When you finish the season with your 20 goals, mm-hmm. them 10 games are like light work to you. Right. That wasn't nothing. You know. So now for, for the kids that are like, not even kids, adults, wherever, that come from that, you know, kind of have that same mindset or that same, come from the same background where it's like fight or flight kind of thing. And you get in a situation where you're with a team that you don't like, a coach that just doesn't fit with you. Yeah. It's a lot more frustrating than fun, which is a huge part about yeah. soccer. It has to be fun. Yeah. It's a lot more frustrating than fun. It's not really going well. What is your, like, what do you do? Because I know you've had times where you've probably did something you regret. Man. Or like You know what I mean How would you Advise somebody Going through the same thing To handle a situation like And it's perfect you say that too Cause I have so much scenarios That I can <laughs> give them About myself You know what I mean Which is so good Like you said that Cause Israel Yeah I'm gonna give you an example Cause they can use that Yeah I was at a club That I didn't wanna go to Right But I was forced to go there mm-hmm. Because of situation With my agent I didn't I told you I could not be home And mm-hmm. not taking care of my family So I have to Take that opportunity Because that's the only opportunity That's given to me mm-hmm. And I've Been at a good level here So for me to be At the bottom like that Was like Not realistic to me You know mm-hmm. what I mean So I went there End of the season Not even end of the season Middle of the season I'm getting booed Off the, off the field wow. By my home fans What? I get booed Damn. Like, and that was last season. Yeah. So this time I'm gonna show him you can turn around from that. Cause mm-hmm. I got booed from my fans. I had a point where the security Damn. on my team had to grab me because he thought my fans were gonna attack me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And football is that intense in Israel. It depends. It's intense. And Israel is a very good country when it comes down to football. They yeah. love their football. And that's and that, I respect them for that. Yeah. They do they do too much sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> they do too much. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I wasn't like nervous yeah. or scared because I'm I'm from a place worse than this. Yeah. Like that's light stuff to me. To me, I look at it, it's just a game. At the end of the day, I'm trying my best. 
That's if you true. if you don't respect it, like cool, tell me you don't respect it. I have no problem. Mm. But just don't cross the line of just disrespecting my manhood like that. You just don't do that. Right. You know what I mean? And I understand you love your team, and I'm working my hardest. But you're as good as the ten men ten men out there. Mm. You know what I mean? Because you make up the eleven. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're mm. good as them. You know mm. what I mean? If they're not performing, you're not performing. Mm. So it doesn't even matter. So I'm not. I would never advise someone to. To count out one guy off the field. Mm -hmm. If the whole team is doing bad, if one guy's doing bad, the whole team's doing bad. Straight up like that. You're only the strongest or weakest link. Yeah. Exactly. And um I got booed off the field, man. And like and for like four games straight. Yeah. To a point where I couldn't score. Like it's every time I touched the ball, I felt like I was in quicksand. Yeah. I couldn't dribble. Yeah. I couldn't pass the ball. I couldn't head the ball. Everything I'm doing was wrong. And even yeah. when I did the right. Still, Still wrong, wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean, and and that's what they got. That's understand. when the confidence is gone. Your confidence is my confidence was not my, not my confidence. To be fair, because I never lose my confidence. To be fair with you, I yeah. I was just down, so I was like depressed. I wasn't having fun no more. Touch base on that. I wasn't yeah. having fun. Every time I go to training, people are arguing because mm -hmm. our team is losing games. So that's the worst thing. When things are going bad, you Locker tend to sucks, yeah. you tend to find the weak link. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the only thing to put the blame on somebody. Right? Always got to put the blame on somebody. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, but that's how you test their character. Mm -hmm. That's how you really judge. Like if you're going through the bad times, who's going to crumble? You know what I mean? That's and true. and where I was, there was a lot of dudes crumbling. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's a lot of dudes crum crumbling, and I was calling to that fire because every time I was at training, it's been a point where they had. A younger kid, five, six years younger than me, mm -hmm. come from the academy mm -hmm. to play over me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which was weird. That's crazy. So that's what I'm saying. He, the kid is six years younger than me, and he doesn't have a resume like me. You know? And yeah. it, and he, they took him to come play over me because the fans didn't want me to play. Mm. And ha, tr trust me, as a foreigner in a country like that, and you know you only went there for one thing. One thing. It's to play football. Yeah, and they're stopping you from doing that. My mental was, I'm was, sad, but it's like, that's just another roadblock. Yeah. Like, that's going to be one of many. You know, I'm going to go through it. Like, this. that's probably my worst one. You know what I mean? But yet again, that's only preparing me for my worst fight. That's true. And when my worst fight happened, you know, I'm going to you know. win that shit. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna win that bro That's nothing to me And I always do everything With a smile Like I don't really care Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm smiling Cause it's like Alright cool Like you're doing that Cool You're just another roadblock Or you're just another opponent to me In my way That's how I look at it If you're not on the field Playing against me You're playing with me in my life mm -hmm. You know what I mean And you're, you're my you're my opponent in life So I gotta mm -hmm. win beat you You know what I mean That's nothing so that's how I look at stuff. That's a dope way to look at it, man. Yeah. That's a dope way to look at it. Well, Andy, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I know you're a busy man. Yeah. Um, if there's one thing you want to leave for the listeners, for the shows, for me, um, yeah. what's what's that one thing, Michael? Keep pushing. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're going through your trials and tribulation, just know that so many people are going through it and yeah. so many people are going through worse than what you're going through. Mm -hmm. And you need to find somebody that you can find that will motivate you to keep pushing mm -hmm. you know because at the end of the day a lot of people are doing the same thing you're doing mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people not getting to where you're at mm -hmm. so so i look at things like i'm here i'm going through it but somebody's going through worse than me and that mm -hmm. person that's going through worse than me someone's doing worse than him that's true you know it's just everything goes yep. in line and yep. it's like you just have to climb the ladder mm -hmm. like you're there in the ladder but you just have to climb it you know what mm -hmm. i mean because you have the guys that are successful that's going to come right back down yeah you know and that's going to have to climb the way back up and if you give up and if you fold you stuck you stuck like you're just stuck because if you stand man. still you're not going nowhere mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and just keep pushing yeah that's how i look at it damn man those that's Deep, deep stuff, man. Yeah. Real, real words right there. Coming from a guy who's doing it. So, like, you guys go out and check him out on IG. You want to shout out your IG? Yeah, yeah. Michael C and Jr. M I C H A E L S E A T O N Jr. Yeah. Oh, by the way, um, not only are you a soccer player, though, you <laughs> dope rapper, man. Yeah, yeah. I got I got the opportunity to sit in at one of your your recording sessions and also check out. You know, you got a music video coming out. Um, still working on it, but I was in there for that shoot too. I got to watch watch that as we were talking, man. Yeah. Just kind of hit on that a little bit. How's it feel being a, a soccer player? Right, you're a little Memphis Depay out here. Yeah, 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 Memphis. How's it feel, man? And and what are you doing with that? Just a side note. The music. Yeah, you know, I take I take music. Um, seriously, twenty three levels. That's, that's twenty three levels. Shout out twenty three you know, levels. Yeah. Right. And all of them, Fredo and all of them. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I take it seriously because at the end of the day, I've always done music. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Even uh, growing up, you know, because mm-hmm. I, when I first came here, I lived next to PG Mall. Yeah. You know, Prince George's Mall. So I did music with my boys every time we go to school or we like in the on around the block, we like rapping stuff. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I, I wrote, I have like old raps from my dad when I was like 15 or 16, yeah. but I never like really recorded them because yeah. I was so busy with soccer. Yeah. You know what I mean? But now I'm like, I tell myself I only live once. You only live once, yeah, I and I, I have motivation. Like I said, I find motivations and people that actually did it or is doing it. Yeah, Dave East is one of them. Played ba- he East. played basketball. Facts. Basketball didn't work out for him. You Facts. know what I mean? He m- music. music yeah. Now he's popping in music. Like at the end of the day, do every if you're blessed with something, go ahead and do it. If they don't conflict with each other, it's meaning like if I'm not playing soccer and I'm trying to play basketball and trying to play in the NFL, they conflict with each other. <laughs> it's, it's nearly impossible. Yeah. But music and soccer is totally different things. And I think if you can like manage both of those yeah. and do well in both of those, go for it. Like who's stopping you except right. you? Like, you know right. what I mean? Right. Nah, man, I, I think you're, you're dope. Dope rapper, man, and I can't wait for that for Hellraiser. I know you got other songs yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. your favorites, but that that Hellraiser, man, is yeah. my song. So, anyways, you guys check them out. Um, so, shout out your IG again, um, and let them know when the albums drop. Is yeah. it an album or EP? When's that coming out? I don't Video? know yet, but it still might, working it on might, it. It might be an um, EP though. EP to be fair, yeah. Okay, so we're going we're going probably going to drop that on Spotify, iTunes Music, and all that. Bet, so, bet. Yeah. But January B said January, but we gon' we gonna see probably be before that, but it depends. Let's see what B saying, cause B my manager. Oh yeah. <laughs> be, my, be, my, be my manager. Bless is less, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, um and then the last thing, uh, for soccer. Are you are you going back to LA next year? Are you still up in the air? Are you still got other yeah. things in mind? What was what's, what's nah, going I signed, on? I signed an extension. So I my should guy. I should I should be back um in January. In January. You know, but okay. I'll probably be there like I'll probably go soon mm-hmm. or whatever, just to train for like a week and then so come back. It's always always training though. And just come oh, back for like a week yeah. okay so we can look forward to looking finding you at, at, in LA so we want to check that out what's the name of the team yeah. where do you guys normally play yeah or the, the, the it's it's on TV it's 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 um it's uh is there a website or is it normally on like where where can uh, we catch catch you it'd be on ESPN plus um ESPN plus ESPN plus and I think they have to sign up for it yeah you know but I don't know much about it but we play um we play in Irvine at the Great Park it's mm-hmm. a new stadium in Orange County mm-hmm. and um our part our affiliate is LAFC so we're really do- we're, we did numbers last season so yeah. our fan base grew. Cause it is a new team, yeah. And the staff did like a great job at building the the team around like experienced players, mm-hmm. young players, and players that basically this year has been players that's been rejected, mm-hmm. or yeah, literally been rejected, or is like at their peak to retire. Mm-hmm. So the guys that are that came down this season to help us it was like the older guys, you know, like his name was Yos Hofield. Mm-hmm. It's one of my boys. So shout out to Yos. You know, he came down to support the younger group like me and my boy Noah Powder from New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And he helped us get to where we wanted to be in like the um, the finals. That's this dope. Year. Yeah. That's dope, man. Anyway, so congrats to you. You had a dope season. Yeah. Um, and uh, guys, thanks for listening. And uh, we look forward to hopefully seeing you again soon on the show, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, Michael C and JR, it's my Instagram again. And look out for Hellraiser. Man. And the EP, you know yeah. what I mean? Cause we dropping everything this year. Bless up. Or even next year, we dropping everything next oh, year. Oh yeah, year round, year Early round. next year. You, 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 you hear Brandon in the back, 23 levels, we out there. 100, 100, 100, 100. All right.